All right, good evening, everyone. We've had an awesome celebration so far through Monday and Tuesday. We pray tonight we'll continue on. I'm happy to see all of y'all. This evening, the scripture is going to come from Acts 1. And I'll start at 6th verse and read through the 11th verse. And I'll be re reading from the English Standard Version. And would you please stand for God's word? Acts 1. And it reads, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judah and Samaria and the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into the heavens as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus was taken up from you into heaven. We'll come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. I read to you Acts 1, 6 through the 11th verse. May God bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. May we pray? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us here this evening, and we want to thank you, Lord, for waking us this morning, Lord, to a day that wasn't promised to us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for protecting us, Lord, keeping your protective hand over us as we travel to get here. And we pray for those that are here and those that are on their way. Lord, we give honor and praise unto you for all things good. We pray for the word that will come forth this evening, Lord, and we pray for the vessel that will bring it. We pray, Lord, that someone in the house will be touched by the word that comes forth. Lord, we ask your continued blessings upon this congregation of baptized believers that we call St. John Missionary Baptist Church. And we pray for each and every member, Lord, and we pray for our under-shepherd. And Lord, we want to give honor and we want to give praise unto you. And we want to thank you and we praise you for all the things, Lord, that you will have in store for us this evening and for your safe passage that we, you're going to provide to us after we leave here. And Lord, we pray that we continue to do your will and do in your way, Lord. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bless our God and clap our hands and let's thank him for another day to be in here come on somebody I don't hear you you need to sound like church ain't nobody here but us come on let's do our very very best to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise we are thankful unto him and we are blessing the Lord's name it's good to be here isn't it I say it's good to be here I need to hear. I say it's good to be here. Amen. Amen. And we give him all of the glory and all of the praise today. Um, uh, just to kind of bring our minds in just a little bit further. What a mighty God we serve. Everybody help me. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow. Me. Heaven and earth. What a mighty God, everybody. 
Come on. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, 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 what a mighty God we serve. Angels bound before heaven and earth. What a mighty God we serve. Say, Jesus is the God. Jesus is that God. We serve. Say Jesus is a God. All the angels bow before heaven and earth. What a mighty God we serve. Say it again. Jesus is a God. We serve. Come on, let's say it. Jesus. We serve angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty call and answer. Help me do it. Say, We serve, we serve, what a mighty God. We serve angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Say it again. Come on. We serve. We serve. What a mighty God. Don't rush it. Angel. Heaven and earth. What a mighty God. Everybody on your feet, clap your hands. Angels bow before heaven and earth. Angels bow before heaven and earth adore. Angels bow before heaven and earth adore. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow, heaven and earth. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth. Heaven and earth adore him. 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 Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. We give him a great big praise as we draw our attention to the uh, video monitors around the sanctuary. Let's lift our con. Con, uh, what is it? Not the convention here. I've been in convention too long. I can, <laughs> our crucifixion here. <laughs> Amen. The old rugged cross today. All right. Going to do the old rugged cross to the glory of our God. Can the church say Amen. Amen. On a hill, on a hill, far away, stood an old rugged cross, and said, and I love that old cross. 
verse number two. Oh. Sing the last One more time. So I'll tell it. Why don't you give him praise for it right there? Just lift your hands and say, thank God for that old rugged cross. Thank you. Thank you for that cross. Hallelujah. As we move forward in our worship and we remain on our feet, we'll lift our Holy Week litany. As we read responsively to the glory of God today. Lord, we celebrate this holy week by tracing your steps from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. Amid the waving of palms, the spreading of garments, you rode into Jerusalem. Your triumphant entry into the city marked the beginning of our redemption. Oh, 
Lord, on that Monday, you rebuked and confronted unrighteousness by cleansing the temple. O oh, holy and righteous one, we thank you for our redemption. Lord, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you proclaimed that when you are lifted up from the earth, you will draw all people to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our redemption. Lord, on Thursday, you celebrated the Passover and instituted the supper that has been our Eucharist. You washed the disciples' feet, promised the Holy Spirit, and healed the ear of Malchus because of your love for humankind. Lord, on the same day Jesus betrayed you for 30 pieces of silver, you were arrested and brought to Caiaphas, the high priest, but showed no anger against these men. Forgiving God, we thank you for our redemption. Lord, on Friday, Peter denied you three times. Pilate did not want any part of your crucifixion. And you were mocked and spat upon, and Judas hung himself because of his betrayal. And Lord, you even accepted the thief on the cross and died at Calvary because of your love for us. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. 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 Lord, when you died on the hill of Calvary, darkness covered the whole land. The earth shook. The veil of the temple split in two, the thunder rumbled, and the graves opened. The centurion was heard saying, certainly, this man was innocent. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Lord, come Sunday, people all over the world will join together to thank you for the power of your resurrection. We know the pain and suffering of Good Friday. And thank you for helping us to experience the joy of Easter. Because you live, we can face tomorrow. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for paying the cost. And all the church said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. And amen. 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 Bless you. Be seated in the very presence of our God. As you take your seats, we ask that you would prepare your hearts and your minds. Uh, prepare your hearts and your minds for the preached word. Amen. I told y'all that when we come into these sessions this week, that's why I don't understand why anybody, everybody ought to want to come to church today. We hit it and quit it. Amen. Amen. Doesn't take us long. If God can give you his life, you can give him an hour and a half. Amen. Amen. And I'm grateful for those of you all that are here and you're celebrating today in this Holy Week experience. And we are uh, incredibly blessed. Uh, the past two weeks, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I told y'all I'm on, I'm on fumes. Y'all pray for me. Uh, but the past two days has been phenomenal. Uh, in this place. Pastor Thigpen and Bishop Glover, it don't make no sense for retired preachers to be preaching like that. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, it has been a wonderful experience and I just believe that God sets us up for every round to go higher and higher. And tonight we are so grateful and so thankful for a beloved friend and brother tonight, I think I told y'all a little bit about our story yesterday, last night, or, or yesterday, or this earlier today at our noonday session. And thank God for those of you all that were a part of our noonday session uh, today. I appreciate you so very, very much. But um, this, this, this seasoned preacher uh, and I go back a long, long ways, even before the days that I was preaching. And uh, down through the years, we've managed to stay in contact some kind of way or another. And he was here with us a few years back. I think he's been here maybe a couple of times. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but he's been with us. He's no stranger to our pulpit. We know him. And uh, we love him. Amen. 
Uh, he is a well-renowned preacher. He is known all over the length and breadth of this country um, and even out of the country, international preacher. Amen. Amen. He's best known, greatly known as a successor to Aretha's daddy. I told you all that, right? At the New Bethel Baptist Church. Followed the late, great uh, C.L. Franklin there. And has been serving there ever since uh, and even before his demise. So we are thankful for longevity at one place and we're grateful for that connection to us today. It is Pastor Robert Smith Jr., actually a native of Pensacola. Amen. Uh, he's, a, he's a native Floridian, but, uh, you know, he didn't got Detroit all in him. Might as well give it to him, right? All the way from Detroit, Michigan today, we are so thankful uh, for his presence and we're thankful for the word that we're about to receive from his presence. I'm soliciting for him your prayers and your amens tonight as he comes to rightly divide the word of truth. Um, we're going to do Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross before preaching. I kind of was thinking about just foregoing all of that in as much as he's a uh, he's his own music and sermon amen he, uh, he's able to do it all and well but I want him I want him to be free tonight to just have his way uh, in the will and the way of the Lord I would that you would take your right hand stretch it towards him and say Pastor Smith God bless you as you bless us tonight Come on, one more time. You know those seats ain't going nowhere, so get on your feet. Do it in C uh, or C or C sharp, either one. Just somewhere around there. That helps me do it all right. Whichever one you comfortable with, all right? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Their precious fountain, free to all a healing stream that flows from Calvary's mountain. We're going to lift... Uh, Let's lift just one verse, one verse, one chorus, and we'll get ready for the word. Come on, everybody. Jesus, Jesus, everybody, meaning the cross, there, oh. come on, ring it out. Fountain and is free. Everybody, oh, heal and stream, and it flows from from Calvary. Come on, let's ring it out. Keep me. Oh, ring it out. Hey. Will you be my? Oh, yeah. Ever until my raptured soul. to find rest beyond one more one more time Lord keep me in Glory ever, until
he saw me he saw me he looked in the crowd and saw me I I was a wretch undone. Had he come down, I would not be free. But praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He, he, he looked from the cross and he saw me. <laughs> he healed me. Thank you, Jesus. He healed me. He in the crowd and hear me I, 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 I walk a wretch undone had he come down I would not be free but praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He looked from the cross and he healed me. <laughs> he saved me. He saved me. He looked in the crowd and saved me. It wasn't because of me. I, 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 I was a wretch undone. Had he come down, I would not be free. But praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He looked. Yeah, yeah. From the cross, and he saw me. Listen, I'm my mother's third child of ten, and she was barely a teenager when she had me. So most folk looked over us, a lot of folk wouldn't even look at us. But thank you, Jesus. 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 He looked. I stand here tonight, twice scheduled for open heart surgery. But I stand without a stitch. Because he healed me. If you've been healed by the Lord, stand on your feet. He healed me. Anybody here got a divine healing? 
healer. I didn't even have a private room, but healer. Healer. Hey, yeah. Healer. Well, some of you have been blessed. You were born middle class, upper middle class, maybe even rich. So you really don't know hardship. So you can't testify. Some of you have never been sick to the point of needing surgery. Uh, but if you are saved and you know you didn't save yourself, I want you to testify with me by going and shake three hands and say, he saved me. I'm just talking to the same people. He saved me. He God bless you. 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 In my father's house, there is a little table. And on that little table, there is a little book. And in that little book is the name of the sanctified. You know none can do the right but the law. Ah, yeah, you gotta run, baby, run, and get your house in order. You better run, Mary, run, oh, and get your house in order. You best to run, Mary, run, oh, and get your house in order. But you know judgment day is coming about and by. Hey, when you hear of my dying, I don't want nobody crying. When you hear of my dying, I don't want nobody crying. When you hear of my dying, I don't want no. Everybody cry, I'll be rich and easy in the arms of my Lord. You just turn my pillow over, and you turn my bed around. You just turn my pillow over. Just turn my pillow over And you turn my bed around You just give that bell a tone You just give that bell a tone You just give that bell a tone I'm going on home. Hey, 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 going on home.
God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He's, you may be seated. He's been good to you. If you count the intersections you went through just in coming here. That's how many times God saved your life. You see, a red light never stopped the car. A stop sign never stopped the car. And if you were hit in a side impact at 40 miles an hour, it doesn't make any difference whether you had your seatbelt on or not. That's why the commercial said half of the people in fatal accidents uh, were not wearing their seatbelt. Because the other half had them on. But God didn't time it for them to get through. He held you up. That's why you couldn't find your car keys. He held you up. That's why the phone rung just as you were getting ready to go out the door. God was timing things for you so that when that sleepy man, that drunk man, that mad man, yeah, and it's so easy now, so easy now. You know, they got what they call the gummies. You don't have to be trying to smoke what we used to call weed or reefer in the day. Yeah, I know many brethren got messed up stomach now because you be smoking your weed and the light come on, you just swallow it. Just swallow it. Just, just, just go on swallow it. Because you know your daddy was going to kill you. You would rather have a burnt stomach than the police to bring you home and say, your son was smoking weed. No, you weren't going to let that happen. But God is so good. I thank him for let me get here one more time. He's a good God. I don't know how much more I tell people. I'm 73 for my second time, and I might be 73 one more time. <laughs> Most Negroes die at 74. That's the average age for black males, so I'm staying on 73 as long as I can. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. Again, thank you. I'm delighted uh, for your kind deacon, chair of your deacon's ministry. He is a man of a humble servant spirit. Amen. And that's the hardest thing to find in church today. <laughs> hardest, hardest thing to find in church today. You know, some people just rename themselves. You can't ask them their names. And you are? I'm Bishop, Archbishop, Apostolic. <laughs> that ain't your name. Uh -huh. You get in church, you ask people, how are you introducing yourself? I'm trusty. Yeah, it's hard to find humble people in the church. You see, just because uh, you're keeping time and you're keeping your form, out there and you marching as soldiers or a band, it doesn't mean you're on the right route. You just got good form and structure, uh -huh. but you ain't going nowhere. That's why the world around you is not changing. You ain't changing the world, you just got good form. People say, oh, that's a great church. What did they do? Well, they, they built a nice church. Keep in step. Uh, but we were sent to save lost souls. He said, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. And if you're not in the soul-saving business, you're not in the Jesus business. Jesus, about how many people have you impacted? You found them 
on drugs, but you didn't call them crackheads. You called them somebody's daughter, somebody's son. You remember the man brought his son to Jesus and told Jesus, when he ain't falling in the fire, he falling in the water. I brought him to your disciples. They couldn't do nothing, but this is what the man said. But he's my son. <laughs> he didn't call him a fool. <laughs> he didn't say he was a drunk, an alcoholic, dope addict, prostitute, jailbird. No, no, you shouldn't label what God made as anything other than what God made it. Just another human being. A human being that needs help. How good the Lord is. I'm going to I'm gonna go on. To, uh, I'm just so glad that somebody invited me somewhere. Thank you, preacher. <laughs> I used to do 12 to 14 revivals a year in Mobile County right outside of Pensacola, as you know. Uh, Y'all used to call Pensacola, uh, Pensacola, Alabama. It's so much Alabama. Because everything we did was in Mobile. But uh, I used to do revivals there since I was 12 years old. And as they grew on and on and on, I would have 11 and 12 revivals a year there. And I had a preacher that was passing. But I had been preaching at this church since I was about 13 years old. And uh, year after year after year. And he was passing on, and I told him, I said, Reverend Hatchet, I said, don't worry, I'm going to keep my eye on Sister Hatchet. I said, go on to the Lord and get your rest. I'll be down here seeing about her. So as times changed, I started getting down there three times a year, and then one time, and like I told the boy yesterday, no times. <laughs> so I called Sister Hatchet, and I told her, I said, Sister Hatchet, I said, I don't know why the guy's not getting me like they used to because I really want to be down there seeing about you. She said, well, Bob, say, they getting young preachers like you were when we were getting you. <laughs> say, you're an old man now. <laughs> she said, I'm about to want no old revivalist. <laughs> How good the Lord is. But I thank him for not forgetting me and giving me this opportunity. Now, on matters in the direction of the cross. The first thing we can ask is, was the cross necessary? Was the cross necessary? A God who's an omni-God, all of everything. Was the cross necessary? Was it necessary for him uh, to dress himself in flesh and blood? Was it necessary for him to give up the comforts, the comfort of heaven and come to earth? Was it necessary? Well, we have to be careful in raising that question. Uh, we cannot ever, uh, ever question the wisdom of God. God is the rock. He can't be wrong. There's no such thing as God being wrong about anything. Uh, it causes great controversy, and some of the best preachers I know and best biblical scholars I know, they avoid even talking about the necessity of the cross. Because it starts with a great controversy called the virgin birth. 52% of the men that stand in pulpits every Sunday uh, don't believe in the virgin birth. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they don't believe it. Many of them avoid it because they can't explain it. But it doesn't matter. They dodge the cross. Uh, they dodge cavalry. They, they dodge the resurrection because it stirs so much controversy. Matter of fact, 
a man who I love to hear is Joel Osteen. But Joe said he just don't talk about things that cause people to have to choose sides. He says his job to make people feel good for 45 minutes. So they come out of the world beat up. They're hurting in their family life. They're hurting on their jobs. They're hurting in their finances. So he doesn't raise any question that might be controversial and cause them to have to choose sides. But you got to remember, we were never told to explain it. Jehovah Witnesses come to your door and ask you, was Jesus God? You say, yeah. They say, did he die on the cross? Say, yeah. They say, who was God while God was dead? I always tell them, I don't know, you don't know, and your mama don't know. Even your mama's mama don't know. You ain't got nobody old enough to say, I knew Mary. You ain't got nobody old enough to say, I examined Mary. They said, did he die on the cross or did he faint? Did he pass out? I said, I don't know. I don't know. They said, did he die? Yes, he died. They said, who was God then while God was dead if he stayed in the grave for three days? I tell them like John. So all things that were made were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So anytime he needs some more God, he just reached back in God and get some more God. But it's not in the knowing. Look what John said. He said, not many believed on him. But as many. Glory, hallelujah. He said, but as many that believed on him, he gave to them power to become the sons of God. Anybody got that power? Anybody got that power? Do you have the power to bless those that curse you? Do you have the power to love your enemy? Do you have the power to pray for those that despitefully use you? Do you have the power to turn the other cheek do you have the power to give over? Jesus. Yes. Only way to have it is to believe. Yes. Oh, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Was it necessary? Well, God's ways, according to Isaiah 55 and 8, are not our ways. And Dr. Williams, it's certainly not my way. There are people who have left my church. I've had seven churches. And well, you see the color of my hair, you know the story. <laughs> I've had this since I was about 27, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I have people who've gotten mad and said, Reverend doesn't pray altar call. I said, no, because you wouldn't want to hear what I tell God about you. Help me, Lord. Cause you, you, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't want to hear because I'm not like Jesus. I'm trying to get there, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like him. How good the Lord is. You know, my wife, she'll get me if I miss a call. So... I had to make sure that phone was on today. <laughs> so I forgot to cut it off. I, I tell her that's why I don't cut it on ring because I'll be somewhere and it'll go to ringing at the wrong time. Uh, so forgive that. Pretend it didn't happen. I, I don't want the biggest thing you remember. Preacher was preaching and his phone was ringing. And forget everything else I was telling you. <laughs> How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. No, God's ways are not our ways. I know, I know 
It's certainly not mine. I'm working on it every day. It took a long time for me, Brother Deacon, to be able to pray for those who despitefully used me. No, no. I, I've been a tither since I was 18. That wasn't hard. Give him a dime out the dollar, and he gave me the whole thing to start with. That wasn't hard. I'm very skeptical about folk faith and salvation who can't give God a dime out the dollar, and God gave them the whole dollar. Yeah, because if you believe in, you gave it to yourself. Let me tell you something. Everybody in here on life support. And if God didn't support it, you wouldn't have it. Can you hear me? We're all on life support. And if God doesn't support your life, you wouldn't have it. So don't ever think you did anything on your own power. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. You're here only because of him. And you wouldn't be here without him. No, I, 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 I've been a, a tither, and I've been so blessed being a tither. There, there are things that are easy. I've been a church goer. It's easy to go to church. But to pray for somebody who's trying to get you fired. Huh? Yes, sir. To pray for that woman who ain't got nam husband and always picking at your husband. That takes some doing. So I would tell him, you don't, you don't want to hear me pray. You don't want to hear what I tell God about you, and I call your name. And I'd be like David, Lord, let the bowels of the earth open up and swallow them. I'm so tired of seeing them. So I'd be in the spirit, I'd be about to get happy, and i look the wrong way. I tell them, people be gossiping and lying and causing controversy. You up there preaching and time you said something, they leaning over to somebody. Oh, he don't mean that. He ain't, that ain't him. I pray like David. Lord, knock out all the teeth and pull the tongue out. So when he come in church Sunday, don't let him have one tooth in his head. When they get ready to talk, they be. <laughs> but watch this. God's way is not our way. Jesus didn't wait till he got up from the grave while he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. Oh, Lord. My God, my God. Yes, yes, yes. God can do no wrong. You got to remember, who killed him? Jewish leaders, Judas, Herod, Pilate, the Romans, or Jesus? Because the scripture said God handed him over. Glory, hallelujah. And Jesus says himself, no man takes my life. Grow it. Hallelujah. Who killed him? My, 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 my. His ways are not our ways. And that could get tough sometimes. I had a man who only had two children. Only had two children. Had the sweetest little wife. And the children were so industrious and smart. Never got in trouble. Athletic and smart, and next thing you know, the daughter turns 23 and die of breast cancer. Next thing you know, the son uh, turns 49 and die with a massive heart attack. Super athlete, and he thought that perhaps it was over. Next thing you know, his wife died. He called and said, "Preacher." I don't understand. I'm not claiming to be a saint, but I'm not wicked. Why is God doing this to me? 
I said, I don't know but one thing. God can't do wrong. There's something in it for the kingdom. Oh, I wish I could get an amen there. You see, with you as a child of God, the thing that's most important to you is advancing the kingdom. Can you hear me? You pray it every night. Thou kingdom come. Nothing more. And Jesus told you, he said, deny yourself. No, no, you, you, you might want the most important thing to be having children, having a good spouse, doing well, eating together, going to church together. But the most important thing is the advancement of the kingdom of God. Thou kingdom come. How are you going to know that that's the most important thing? Because you've denied yourself. You denied yourself. If you feel a lot of pain, it means you have not denied yourself. Can you hear me? If you feel a lot of pain, I have some people, nine months after mama dead, they still moaning and groaning and crying and weeping and want people to pet them every time they come through the door. So I have to ask them, do you believe in the father's house of many mansions? If you do, do you believe your mama was saved? Well, you ought to be happy for her to get out of this mess down here. You ought to be happy for her not to just lay and suffer, not to just fade out, but go on out. See, ain't nothing wrong with moving if you got somewhere to go. The only shame in having to move is you ain't got nowhere and you get set out. But I tell you, I got to. I wish I had a witness in here. I said, I know I got to. Have you, have you got somewhere to go? Yes, yes. Well, if you feel a lot of pain, you ought to do what Paul tell you. He said, die daily. Because dead people don't feel no pain. I serve on the public broadcast system uh, planning board for church presentations and they had one the other week about why is it that Gen uh, Z and X and Y ain't in church and so they start the ministers who are in charge uh, there's a book called Fight and uh, evidently they read it and children told stories but I was in church but I was so hurt uh, to find out Sister Sally was going with Sister Mary husband, and I ain't want to go no more. He said, I, got, I quit going to church because the preacher, he was a punk. Uh, the other preacher was a whore. I found out they drank, and that just hurt me so bad. Yeah. Well, you should have died, and you wouldn't have felt that. <laughs> help me now, help me. Help me, you you too lively. You coming in church thinking about the other folk, how they living and what they doing, and not your living and what you doing. If you doing all you can do to advance the kingdom. Uh, you need to die so you don't have no pain. I'm getting ready to close. If you're a shouter, please prepare yourself. I really don't want to close, but if you're 73 and 340 pounds, that's not a good combination. That's not a good combination. I got to quit whether I want to or not. Amen. So if you're a good shouter, prepare yourself. How good the Lord is. Uh, Yes, praise his holy name. Why, 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 why did he die on the cross? One thing he died for was to bring you closer to God. Oh, hallelujah. Because the scriptures say you once were far away. He couldn't bring you closer. 
if you was already close as you could be. But his dying on the cross was all about bringing you closer to God. How's, how's that going? Happen? Well, when you see that he could suffer, glory, hallelujah, that brings you closer to God when you suffer. When you see he could be betrayed, that brings you closer to God when you are betrayed. When you see he could, yes, yes, be denied, oh, that brings you closer. And then the Bible said Jesus wept. Anybody here had to cry sometime? Don't fool me now. Did anybody here had to cry sometime? Is there anybody here ever woke up and your pillow was wet with tears? Is there anybody here ever been hurt to your heart? Oh, glory, hallelujah. Anybody here ever had to cry out even as Jesus cried out on the cross? Well, he brings you closer. You can say, near, oh my God, to thee. He died on the cross. The cross was necessary. Yes, it was. So that you could come closer to God. Oh, praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Not only did he die to bring you closer, but he died for your sins. Glory, hallelujah. He died for your sins. Hmm. Now that might be hard for you to digest as an intellectual since you were not born, what sins did you have? Well, the sin that you have is the fact that you were born. Can you hear me? And Adam, all men sin. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah, that's the sin you were born. You're born in sin. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't have to do nothing. You were born in sin. I was born in a family called Smith. I have a lot of Arab friends. And I've spoken at uh, several rallies lately against Israel slaughtering people uh, as if though. Had two conferences at the church explaining uh, to people what's going on. And I get upset with my friends all the time when they don't want to say their name. Uh, they say Sam. They say Wally. Uh, Detroit has the largest Arab population in the United States. And you, everybody you meet, Sam Wally. I say, no, what's your name, man? I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say it because my name Hussein. I said I wish I knew my name. I said, but I was born in the Smith family, and the reason I'm a Smith because the slave master was a Smith, and I really don't know my name. You, you ought to be proud of your name. Well, just like I was born a Smith. You were born in sin. So he died to blot out your iniquity, to cover your transgression and forgive your sin. Anybody out here thankful? Anybody out here thankful? Anybody out here thankful? Can anybody say, I'm so glad. Yes, Lord Jesus, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. My, my, my. He didn't die to make me sin less. <laughs> no, he died to forgive me. That in spite of the fact that I sin, but it won't take my salvation. No, he's already given his blood to wash my sins away. <laughs> he's already... He's already, yeah, he didn't find me just not guilty. He didn't acquit me, 
But what he does every day is a brand new day. Didn't nobody hear me? Didn't nobody hear me? So how does it happen, preacher? Uh, if you're doing wrong, uh, how are you going to receive uh, eternal life? Uh, well, he gave it to me uh, when I believed. Anybody here believed? He said, he that believeth hath right now uh, eternal life. Have I got any witnesses here? Is there anybody here know that you got eternal life? Uh, I hear you singing uh, to my Lord I'm running trying to make a hundred. It ain't going to make no difference if you make a hundred and twelve. If he didn't die for you if he didn't die for you, Lord, if he didn't die for you, Lord have mercy. <laughs> y'all act like y'all don't hear me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to say it one more time. <laughs> and if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus, <laughs> I think you ought to shout out, thank you. <laughs> He died for me. He died for me. He died. He paid the price. Nails in his hand. Nails in his feet. A hole in his side. He died. He died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Got one more thing, and I'm going to let you go. But Dr. Williams, what I like about it, he died to reveal his character. He died so you know what kind of God he is. If you listen to folk, you think he's some kind of prison warden. Spying down on his people, uh, catch anybody doing wrong, <laughs> he mess them up. <laughs> but no, he doesn't do that. <laughs> the wages of sin is that. <laughs> no, no, God doesn't have to punish you for your sin. Because <laughs> the wages of sin is that. <laughs> Every time you sin, <laughs> something dies. <laughs> You're cutting yourself short. <laughs> but I'm so glad he didn't have to be persuaded. <laughs> you know what happened <laughs> when a man sinned in the garden. There was no SOS to heaven <laughs> saying, come see about us. <laughs> but God came on his own <laughs> and man tried to hide from him. <laughs> When, when Jesus uh, came to Bethlehem uh, to lie in a manger uh, for 400 years, uh, nobody uh, had asked him to come. So his dying uh, showed the character of God. This is what he said. Uh, for God uh, so loved the world. For God uh, so loved the world. For God so loved you. Anybody here know you're loved by God? Don't fool me now. Do you know God loves you? Do you know God loves you? If you know God loves you, it won't hurt you when people ignore you. It won't hurt you when people scandalize you. If you know God loves you, it's just like when you were a little boy, when you were out playing, when you fell and cut your knee, all you wanted was mama. You call on mama. You call on mama. Because getting in mama's arms, you forgot about the knee. I'm so glad. I know he loved me. Do you know he loved you? If you know that he loved you, show enough love you, enough to die for you. Stand up on your feet. 
Raise your hand in the air. Shout hallelujah. 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 Glory. God bless you. 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 I was looking for a friend who go with me to the end. I was hoping to find somebody I could trust in. I was searching for peace of mind. Jesus came in right on time because that's the kind of friend he is. Those are the church open. just as you are make a decision for Jesus Christ tonight concerning these matters of the cross it's good news to know that he died that he was buried that he laid in the grave that he got up on the third day morning y'all y'all hear me say it first Sunday in and first Sunday out and I should have been crucified I should have suffered bled and died I should have hung on the cross in disgrace but God's son Jesus took my place that's good news to know that when you come up with all of your questions trying to figure out why this and why that it's kind of like what I tell y'all all the time and, and he alluded to it tonight that individuals ask the question where did God come from you know they're trying to stump you where did God come from who created God God, God you know if, if you can't embrace Genesis 1 and 1 and the first four words of the Bible in the beginning God then you ain't gonna believe nothing else that the Bible says the question comes up where did God come from where, who, and, and I always you know they, they try to stump me in my early years of ministry and I'd always go away and try to find an answer I said I'll get back to you but then I was able to come back and just tell him, say, I don't know where he came from, but I'm glad he got here. <laughs> I'm glad I know him. It doesn't really matter where he came from, which came first, the chicken or the egg. It doesn't matter. You eating both of them. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for him crucified. Thank God for him buried. Thank God for him risen again. If you want to make a decision for Christ tonight, I don't know. I'm looking around the room. All of us look safe and secure. But you can never make the assumption. Never make the assumption that everybody's on their way to heaven and everybody's in good standing with the Lord. So if you're here tonight, Bible says that the preaching of the gospel, men can be saved. You can be rescued tonight from the penalty of sin. You don't have to go to hell. That's good news. Somebody should have shouted right there. You, hell is real. You don't have to go to hell tonight. But you can be free and delivered and kept and sealed in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ until the day of redemption. If you're here today, man, woman, boy, or girl, wherever you are, if you're listening to me, you might be streaming in tonight. 
and you want to make a decision, you can put it in the comments and say, yep, that's me. I need to get right with God. We'll, we'll make sure that your process is taken care of, care of tonight. But don't leave this place. Don't leave this time. Don't leave this service the same way you came in. Get right with God and do it right now. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this set servant that you have sent to us tonight to deposit into us and give us understanding concerning your son's death and your son's burial and your son's resurrection. We thank you tonight, God, that we're made the wiser and the better and the stronger by your word. And God, we're able now to declare even all the more that you are real and you are right, you are true. And we're going to do everything within our power to serve you with everything we got. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Save, sanctify, deliver, set free. Have your way in every life under the sound of my voice so that you can get your glory at the end of the story. In Jesus' name, it is so. Everybody clap your hands and let's thank God for his goodness thus far. Save a wretch like you. And me, that's love. Come on, y'all help me do that. The door of the church is open. Wherever you are, come on. If you need to make a decision for Christ tonight, the altar is open. Jesus went, say it. Jesus, the Calvary, save a wretch like you and me. Come on. And that's love. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it that. What did he do when he died? They hung him high, they hung him, stretched him wide, hung his head, and for me he died. And that's love, oh, that's love. Say that one more time. He, he hung him high, stretched him wide, he hung his head and for me he died that's love come on straight away want to recommit come on need a church home come on but that's not how say it that's not how the story is on the third day he rose again and that's love Oh, that's love. Somebody ought to shout about it in advance and say, that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose. And oh, another part of that story say, that's not how story is he's gone away but he's coming again that's love hallelujah Jesus that's love I'm glad about it I know it say it again that's not how that story is say he's gone away but he's coming again that's love Oh, that's stay right there and testify. Say that's love. Stay right there. Smile at somebody. Tell them that. Tell somebody else that's love. I glad I know him. Glad I can show him. That's love. That's love. That's love. How he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. No greater love. No greater. No greater. Say it again. That's love. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. That's
clap your hands and give him praise to everybody. Thank you so much. Smile over three people and tell them, I'm so glad I'm saved and safe and secure from all alarm. I'm so glad he saved me and I'm so glad I'm on the Lord's side and he's on my side. Clap your hands one more time for Pastor Robert Smith Jr. tonight. Amen. Amen. He's been doing it just like that for as long as I've known him and longer. Amen. Amen. And we thank God that the Lord is still in the blessing business and still using him to the glory of our God. And uh, I'm going I'm going I'm going to look forward to next time we get together. Amen. Amen. Blessings on him. Listen, if he's been a blessing to you, you all know you can sow into him. I believe in that wholeheartedly, that Galatians 6 and 6 piece, that if you are blessed by the word, you ought to bless the one that sows the word into you. That's what Galatians 6 and 6, that he that is taught in the word, communicate to him that teaches the word. So uh, if you've been a blessing, you can take care of that. We, we take care of our responsibilities as a church for all of our guests uh, so you know, they're going to be well taken care of but if it's been personal to you you ought to be a personal blessing in return uh, to the one that deposits into you can the church say amen right there can I be pastoral for just a second and that ain't just for guests I'll be pastoral you know I ain't, ain't going to always be the pastor so I might as well talk for whoever's going to be the pastor, whenever they're the pastor. Anybody that blesses you, you can bless them in return. Say amen, somebody. Amen. All right. So if he's been a blessing to you, uh, Bob511 is his cash tag. All right. So if you uh, want to sow into him, if you don't have a holy handshake, something tangible to put in his hand. You can make his cash app buzz. You, you saw his, his phone does work, so I believe. <laughs> All right. I believe he'll get it. All right. To God be the glory tonight. Tomorrow night, um, we're going to be in the Monday, Thursday uh, night of Holy Week. Tomorrow night, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. Um, you know, and some of us are so Baptist and we are so traditional, so we have a whole bunch of traditional questions and so forth. Listen, just get to church. Amen. Amen. Some of us was out wondering if we we're going to put on our uniform. We need to be uniform. We need to do this. We need to just get to church. Just make sure, make sure there's some cups and some, some juice and some wafers around here uh, so we can observe the Lord's Supper on the table. Uh, and just get to church the best way you can. Is that all right? All right. And the senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church is going to be here with us tomorrow. Bishop uh, Adam Jefferson Richardson Jr. is going to be with us tomorrow. I want you all to go and find all your AME friends. All right. Find all your AME friends and tell them that the senior bishop of the church is going to be at the St. John Church uh, tomorrow night. All right. I'm looking, um, looking for them here. I'm expecting them. Amen. I'm expecting all of them to come and share on tomorrow night. Monday night, Pastor Thigpen was here. His members showed up in town. That's what I expected. Amen. Amen. The senior bishop of all. Do y'all hear me say all? all? All of the AME church is going to be with us tomorrow. And uh, I'm sure the connectional church within African Methodism wants to be a part of that. So y'all help me get the word out, okay? All right. And so we'll be giving the last installment tomorrow of uh, these season sermons as we head towards the cross. Uh, on Friday, Friday, we're going to come back at noon for our uh, annual Good Friday service and do seven last sayings here at noon on Friday. So keep that in mind as we press our way um, towards this weekend. Amen. All right. Get on your feet. Get your good offering in your hand. Uh, y'all know y'all know what I mean. A good offering, right? Get a good offering in your hand. 
Uh, a good offering is more than a dollar. You know, the church really ought to be beyond putting a dollar in the plate by now anyway. <laughs> I told you, did I tell you all the story of my granddad is going on to be with the Lord and I ain't never seen him in nobody's church the whole time I've been living. But he claims he was a part of the CME church when he was coming up and he used to stand up to take up the offering uh, in the church. And he said that was back in 1930s, 1940. And he said he stood up and take up the offering. And, you know, you had to give your little speech when you're getting ready to take up the offering on what you wanted folk to give. And he said we used to start the offering off then with a dollar. And he looked at me and he said, buddy, yo, I understand y'all still up there starting the offering with a dollar. I told you, I ain't never seen them in nobody's church. <laughs> But he heard we still starting offerings. Off. We ought to be way past that by now. Amen. If you think that's the best that you can do for a God who does so much for you, then something's wrong with that. Come on. Uh, inflation happens. Cost of living happens. If cost of living is happening everywhere else, how come it can't happen at the church house? Say amen, somebody. All right. So get a good offering in your hand. And let's surrender that. If you need an offering envelope, ushers are available to help you to keep good records. Um, if you need electronic giving, you can do that through Givelify. Uh, if you're streaming in and you want to give, hit make a donation and that'll get your offering right in here to us also. You can even use snail mail still. We'll still receive it. Amen. Amen. Still use snail mail at post office box 227 as we give to the glory of God. All right, get how you're going to give. Lift it up to the glory of God or hold it near to your heart if it's not electronic and you don't have a pacemaker. Amen. Amen. Y'all know I started saying that one time. I mean, take your cell phone. If you're giving it electronic, hold it to your heart. And I thought about it. Some folk might got to, you don't want to mess up that pacemaker. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So just, just hold it in sincere uh, adoration for God as you surrender that which you are going to give to him for the great things that he has given unto us. Come on, let's bless our gifts together. Dear God, I thank you for the opportunity to bless you for blessing me. In the name of Jesus, receive my gift. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I thank you because of my obedience. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am the lender and not the bar. And I expect a great harvest. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody, come on, let's ring it out. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of Thine own have we, have we given thee and the Lord. The Lord make his face and be gracious and bring it out and give. Smile at somebody, bless them, say the Lord. Bless you and keep you. Come on. Lord, make his face. And be gracious. And do what? And give. It is so, it is done. Amen. 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 Blessings on y'all. I love you. Hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good night's rest. Live as a gentleman.